Hey everybody, it's Doug Wolf with Redefy Real Estate. Uh, today is April 5th and we're going to be looking at March's data for the cities of Virginia Beach, Chesapeake, and Norfolk. Uh, this is information that if you're a buyer or a seller, you need to know uh, that's going to help you make a decision if now's the right time to start looking for a home if you're a buyer or if it's a good time to put your home on the market and how it compared to the years past uh, and what those trend lines mean to us as uh, buyers and sellers. Let's get to the numbers. So we're going to start off looking at this bar graph over the last three years of homes for sale right down here on the bottom. You can see the the graph that we've chosen homes for sale. This is going 2017, 2018, 2019. And over here, you can see the numbers just uh, the same as if I was looking at this and you can see Virginia beach down 7.9% versus last year, uh, 2018 for March, uh, Norfolk down 8.8% and Chesapeake down 9.2%. And to really highlight this, uh, when I talk to people and they say, well, how's the market doing? If I change this bar graph to the line graph, and then I go back five years or max, which takes us back to 2009, you can really see that trend line. And this is homes on the market. These, this is, uh, property for each uh, each year in the month of March and uh, and people say well the market goes up in the spring right well we're comparing March to March to March to March we're not comparing uh, like December to March so you can see it's it has been trending downward as far as the number of homes on the market and if I take this and I click on month supply which uses an absorption rate and that absorption rate tells us how many months of inventory we have. This is what it looks like. That's the number of months of inventory. So Virginia beach right now for the month of March, 3.5 months of inventory, Norfolk 4.1 Chesapeake 3.5, meaning that if we didn't list anything else in April or, or, or any of the following months, we would only have 3.5 months of inventory left and then there would be no homes for sale. And, uh, that's an interesting trend line. I mean, you can clearly see we're, we're, we are at the lowest that we've been in a very long time. And, uh, as far back as this graph can go, uh, I mean, back here in 2011, we're at, we're at eight months of inventory in Virginia beach for the month of March and, or, or for the month of June in 2011. And here we are uh, all the way down to 3.6 months of inventory. So we're not sure exactly why that is, why there isn't a lot of inventory. Um, people are staying in their homes longer. They, uh, they're figuring out accommodations for, uh, for seniors and, um, and there's a lot of rentals. There's a lot of rental property out there right now. And I think that is uh, one of the big reasons for the trend line, but let's take a look at how this is affecting sales price. And so here you can see, uh, if we go far back, the max number of years back to 2009, the trend line has continued to increase for how much homes are selling for. That could be another reason why inventory is low. Not as many people can afford to buy a home uh, in today's uh, what some might say an inflated market as far as price goes. And you can see appreciation 2%, 3%, 2.3% uh, right over here. And Historically, real estate has increased at a 3% across the country at a 3% appreciation uh, since they started to track that. But that's where we are. The number of closed sales, we can continue to see yeah, closed sales have, have pretty much held their own, uh, but a slight increase certainly over time going back to 2009. And you can see that trend line continuing uh, to go up as far as the number of people buying properties. So we have supply and demand. We have limited supply and a high demand for properties, but it's not necessarily being reflected. We go back to sales price in the price of the home. The prices of the homes are being controlled certainly by the appraisers and the mortgage companies. Uh, they're only going to let it go so high, but there is going to continue to be appreciation. We see that. And the reason for that is certainly homes do appreciate over appreciate over time, as well as we know that our month supply going back to this is very, very low. So what does this mean to you as a buyer or a seller? Well, as a seller, it means that if you put your home on the market, you still need to be reasonable with the price. 
you need to have a market analysis specific to your property, we certainly can do that for you uh, here at Redify, as well as uh, you're going to know that your home's going to probably go under contract relatively quickly. It could have multiple offers on it, but the price can only go so high because of the appraised value, which has nothing to do with assessed value or what your brother-in-law thinks the home is worth. It has to do with what a market analysis using comparative properties uh, will tell you how much the home is worth or give you a really good range. As far as a buyer is concerned, if you are a buyer, this is telling you quickly that you need to be aware that there just are not a lot of homes on the market and there are a lot of buyers out there still and there is going to be probably competition on a home that is priced at market value and you're going to need to make sure that you have representation that is extremely uh uh, confident and their expertise is in writing offers and negotiating on your behalf we can certainly do that for you as well here at redify we specialize in those things uh, so that's what you need to know if you're a buyer and a seller uh, we are Redefy, R-E-D-E-F-Y dot com. We are a flat fee full service company. Uh, we handle everything from beginning to end for you as a seller for $5,500. It is a flat fee. So give us a shout, visit our website, and we will be back next month looking at April.